Ciao, creative friends. My name is Joey Balistrieri. Welcome to my channel. I received one of the two subscription boxes that I get directly from the Czech Republic, and this one is called Bohem Style. The company name or the website name is Craftica, and they do two boxes a month that are available, and I get both of them. This Bohem Style box is really cool. If you're newer or if you're a person that likes kits and you like things all, you know, all the supplies gathered up for you and you just want to do the handiwork and the making because this box comes every month with a little insert and on the insert is a code that takes you to a full video tutorial for two projects every month. Now I'm a little bit early in filming because I received my box ahead a little bit. So I actually have not even seen those projects yet, but the, when I edit, I will pop some pictures up so you can see what supplies are here for which projects. But as you know, if you've been here at all, I kind of like to do my own thing. So it's so exciting. I love the little box that this that this curated collection comes in. It's got this cute little window and you know when you open it, it's just all the little grass and the beads are inside. So I've already taken everything out to save time. I am going to do a super quick unboxing and jump right into a project. And just to let you know, the other box from this company is called Check Beads Exclusive. And as I said, I get both boxes from this company, worldwide shipping. So wherever you are, these boxes are available to you and you can go and shop the website. But this is the bracelet that I did with the other box from this company and I can link this this video in the description box if you did not see it it is so gorgeous the beads this month the the um, whole style of the box this month as you can see was just wonderful so I'm gonna dive right into a super quick unboxing as I said because these beads are just wonderful and some of my favorite shapes so we received in this collection three different colors of an eight millimeter fluted check glass melon bead. And it has, um, it looks like it's a copper wash. Feels to me like it's a copper wash. Um, I typically mix coppers and golds and antique bronzes. They're very warm metals. So I am gonna mix it up when I start my project, but aren't they wonderful colors? I mean, just beautiful for end of summer and transitioning into fall. And then we received a six millimeter version of those same beads. And you know, check glass is amazing because they do layer on different finishes. And so you can see like a Picasso wash, you can see like a little bit of a metallic finish on these two. I mean, there's just so much depth and dimension in a check glass bead. I mean, they're famous for their wonderful details. And then I love these little tiny rondelles. Aren't they wonderful? And for being so tiny, they have that Picasso finish on them, which is that kind of a modeled, um, it's kind of um, difficult to describe. It's a little bit of a speckling. I really love it. It adds kind of the look of a canvas, the you know, the background of a painting, the canvas look. I really love it, but it adds so much beauty to everything. And then there are these beautiful little cube seed beads, little cuboid beads, and again, they have that Picasso finish on them. So you see a lot of dimension. It's not just a flat, plain color in the check glass. So I love that. And then I have to just tell you, I was unboxing this and I started to see these colors here. And in my mind, I was thinking, oh my, I am going to add like a burgundy wine color in with those beads. And the Craftica company read my mind because they put in this gorgeous teardrop bead and it has that burgundy wine or dark raspberry like wash to show the fluting on it as well as the Picasso finish. You can see the dappling or like the modeling there with that golden color and then they also for an accent color and as I said I have not seen the two projects at the time of this filming that these beads were meant for um, I am gonna do my own thing and I'm really excited about it and I'll show you why um, but this was their little accent bead a little it's a druck it's a little smooth check glass round it looks like a two millimeter to me so 
I was thinking exactly the same thing when I saw these beautiful colors. They're like a neutralized blue, green, and kind of a, a rich beige, you know, a khaki color. And then in this box, there are five of these beautiful little butterfly connectors. And I think I'm going to do a second project with these. Um, I love the idea of this and the burgundy. I just love this antique brass with this burgundy color. And then there was this beautiful focal charm. Look at this. It has like the seasons. It's a charm that shows the seasons. There's a snowflake here. There's a tree here, which might maybe might be fall, the sun for summer, and then this little um, like sprig for spring, I guess. But it's like the Four Seasons charm. It's just beautiful. I mean, you could literally just put this on a jump ring and put it on leather cord and have the sweetest fast pendant. So that's the ingredients as well as all of the findings. So as I said, this is a kit. So they provide you with everything that you need to do two projects every month. It is usually a necklace and a bracelet, but as I said, haven't seen it yet. <laughs> so I imagine since there's two lobster claw class, it's a necklace and a bracelet, the jump rings, the flat crimp, the style of crimping with the beads, the bead stringing material, and like jump rings. There's even just one head pin in here, so I imagine something is for a charm. And for sure, I'll pop up a picture when I do the editing. But you guys, <laughs> look what I just received. I did an order. Um, and I just got this beautiful Brazilian wax cord. This is the 0.5 millimeter, so it's not the tiniest that they make, but it pretty much goes through any bead. And I am so excited because, as I said, when I was unboxing this, I was thinking, oh, burgundy with that. And just look at this, you guys. I mean, I'm just so excited to do a bracelet with this. So, I'm also going to be using my tying station. So this is a beadalon tool and I am a jewelry tool aholic. So I have this and it is great if you have any kind of a macrame or a knotting technique where you kind of need to control threads and you know do knots and keep everything lined up but if you don't have this tool you can totally do this project today using a clipboard or you can even just tape your work to your work surface, just tape it down. So you don't have to have this, but um, it's so cool to have this. Um, it's not an expensive tool. I can actually link this in the description box if you think that you might be doing a lot of projects like this. So I'm not gonna take it all the way off, but this has a lot of different possibilities for those of you who've never seen this. You can measure, like if you're making a bracelet or you know you need to know how far along you are in your knotting or your macrame knots, um, you have the measurement here. These little holes are for earrings. So if you want to hook like um, an ear wire in the hole, I have one here, but it's got an earring on it. If you want to hook an earring into this hole, like a lever back and close it and macrame right onto the earring, that's what that's for. Or, you know, like it has all these on the other end too. It has all these possibilities for holding things down. There's even this little spongy um, piece. And so if you need to clasp a lamp work bead or a glass bead, it's already on and you need to clasp it down without putting, you know, any pressure on it, you have even this little spongy attachment for that. So I'm going to be using my tying station and I also am going to be doing my clasp as a button closure. And this is something else I just got. I love buttons. If you're not new here, I'm sure you have heard me say that I've been collecting buttons since I was a little girl. And these are both check glass buttons and I just love them. I, When I see buttons going on any kind of a sale or promotion, I add to my collection. I have some that are actually from the Victorian era. I have some that you know are about 80 years old, 90 years old. But these are new, they're check glass. And I am actually struggling because I love them both so much with this collection. And I think the burgundy is going to really look great attached to one of these buttons and I don't know which one to use. I wish you guys were here and you could give me a vote. So I'm thinking about that. I'm going to put those little guys right there and decide. And then also the other thing that I always do is go in my stash and pull out seed beads. 
So I'm not sure which ones of these I'm going to use in my macrame, but I love this gold. It's simply called gold. Uh, it is a check glass bead and I have the 8-0s and the 11-0s here and I love this with the antique brass. It's not a super flashy shiny gold. So I do have both of those sizes and then I have these two check glass beads that have that Picasso finish on it. So they match beautifully <laughs> with the beads in this collection. And then I have this really cool little seed bead. It's an 8-0 and um, it's a round. It, it's, I just love this. I think I got this at a bead shop. It is the perma finish. It's a matte galvanized starlight and it's like between um, a gold and kind of a beige kind of a khaki and it has a little luster to it so I really like that it's really neutral and just like look at that with the with the burgundy so this is what I pulled out and when I get started knotting I will likely try a couple of looks and see what I like the best and I'll definitely show you what I've decided on so the first thing that I am going to do is take a length of that burgundy waxed cord actually two lengths um, I've cut them ahead of time I need about a seven inch bracelet and um, knotting does take up an awful lot of inches you know of length on your cord so I have here probably a 30 inch strand honestly I didn't measure I tend to eyeball these things and this other one, I don't even know, I didn't measure this one either, probably about 30 on this as well, because I don't think that my macrame is going to go all the full length of my bracelet. It may when I get going, but I really love dimensional brace bracelets, so I'm thinking of a section of the macrame knots and then a uh, chunky overhand knot and then branch out into something else. But you know, when I get going, I'll decide. So before I can do anything, I do need to decide on my button. And as much as I love this cat, um, I don't know. I just, I'm leaning towards this little beige khaki colored check glass button. I love this little cat. Um, I have a Bella cat and that's why I got that. But I'm going to feed both of my cords through and I'm going to do like a lark's head knot. I'm going to bring those two tails through and then just tighten this down to my button and then I'm going to do an overhand knot right there and I'm going to go ahead and get out my knotting tweezer because uh, if I end up doing more knots for the macrame you can just use your fingers but I love a knotting tweezer um, I can really control where my knot lands so you make your overhand knot reach through the loop get a hold of your cords and when you pull your cording it lands right where the tip of your tweezer is and then I just kind of save my fingernails by locking that down so I have this pretty little beginning to my bracelet third strand and get my tying station in here and get set up I'm gonna move these off to the side okay so this is where um, I want to start my bracelet with my button closure this is where this little spongy thing can come in handy because I need to start knotting right here and I don't want to damage my button but I do need it to be in here so I'm just going to get it placed just like that and push down so that I can oh, I'm gonna need to remove a plate so that's why this is this thing is so cool because you can create whatever thickness you need okay i can tug on this a little bit now i have my check glass button in here and it's pretty secure i mean i can't pull super hard because it's just foam but um that is the cool thing about the tying station is you can sa make a sandwich for whatever thickness like whatever your project is you can make those adjustments and um so now i'm going to start with a little series of square knots let me pull in my third 
piece of Brazilian waxed cord and I'm just going to go underneath. Oh, I forgot to secure. Before I start, I'm going to come down to this end and just um, secure the other end of my cord. Okay, so you have options with this project. I'm gonna just come up here. So you can come and secure this, um, you know, underneath the end and have this like this. I'm gonna start off not securing this because I want to feed some of these beads onto this, uh, to both strands of this cord. And it's usually best to, you know, put a few on, but you can do it as you go as well. Um, I think after you, you know, get, a f get your project going, you'll kind of get your own rhythm as to how to do this. But I'm gonna start with one of each color and just go ahead and feed it on my so just two strands here let these hang out <laughs> these beads i'm just gonna let them hang out and as i said i'm i could go ahead and secure i mean it's not a big deal to unsecure so i guess i can put it in there a little bit um just tighten up that washer i know this tool is a little bit long and i do realize that i'm out of camera but i didn't do anything but tighten the um i'll show you just tighten it with my thread underneath the plate at the other end. And I'm gonna start off with um, a square knot. So I'm gonna try to um, match up these ends before I do my first knot, just so that I use up my cord evenly. There's a little bit, whenever you start any knotting, I always find that there's a little bit to manage with the cording because you need some length to start off with. So I'm gonna start off by making sure that my cord that I'm going to be doing the square knot with is underneath my center cord. So can you see it's underneath? And then I'm gonna start on the right hand side, make a little loop here and bring it over the top of this core wire here. Then my left hand cord is going to come over everything and under the loop and through it and I just pull it through and then when I pull I have the first half of my square knot then I'm gonna come on this side and do the same thing make a loop now on the left hand side bring my other cord on top so over and then under everything and through the loop so I kind of get this little rhythm where I say over, under, through, and that helps me to remember because if you don't do both sides of a square knot, if you just do one side, you get a spiral, which is another look. It's a nice look. And um, obviously I'm away from my knot, but I want my square knots to start right up here where my other knot is and just tighten it and then I'm gonna repeat that. Okay, I'm just going to repeat that until I am happy with this look here. So I'm going to make a loop on the right hand side and my cord is resting over my center. Then bring my left hand side so that it's laying on top of that cord and goes over everything and under the center wire and through the loop and then pull. Snuggle that up there and then do the same thing on the left. Make a left hand loop. Take this right hand cord now on top of that loop and then under everything and through the loop and then pull. And let's see, I like the look. I think I think I'm gonna do one more 
I'm going to do a right hand loop, then get a hold of that. My left hand cord comes on top of that tail and I almost made a mistake. I haven't done this in a really long time and I'm a little bit out of practice. Okay, and in order to complete that, I'm going to make a left hand loop, bring that cord over, under the core, and through the loop. So it's like over, under, through, and pull. Okay, and that's like a good little start. So now I'm going to bring my first bead, slide it up into position and I'm going to forget that's there because I'm going to continue to do exactly the same thing and here's where I have to decide what I want to do on as my seed bead so what I am thinking I really like this but I am thinking that a little pop of gold might be what I want to do so I'm going to dump a few of these out here and just give me a minute because I'm going to slide a few beads on and see if I like the look before I continue knotting. And if you're not familiar with Brazilian waxed cord, you can stiffen the end with some clear nail polish or super glue, but it has a light coating of wax. And if you just pinch and twist, you get a really nice natural needle. So I never take the time to stiffen the ends. I'm going to put a few. Let me try. Let me try five beads. That is really pretty. Okay, and I'm going to do five on this side as well. Okay, now I'm going to just forget that that bead is there and I'm going to forget that those seed beads are there and do the exact same thing that I've been doing. I'm going to make a right hand loop where this, core, this, this um, cord is laying on top of my center then my left hand string lays on top of that and goes under and through the loop. Under and through the loop. So you can see why it's useful to have the tying station because your hands are busy with this type of knotting and then I'm just going to pull. Okay, and now to complete that, I'm going to do the same thing on this side. A left hand loop. This goes over that strand, under the core, and through the loop, and pull. That is gorgeous. Now from here, when you're doing this, you can decide if you want to do more plain knots and then bring up another bead, which is what I intend to do because I love this burgundy accent color. Um, so I intend to now do some more square knots that are just plain. So a right hand loop over the core, bring my left hand string over that strand, under everything and through the loop. and pull. I'm going to slide up another bead and I am going to continue with that same pattern of five seed beads on each strand. Okay. 
Okay, and just repeat. I'm going to pretend none of that is there. Make my right hand loop and then bring my left hand strand over that strand under the core and through the loop and pull. And then same thing again on the left side, a left hand loop, bring this cord over that strand under the core and through the loop and pull. And again, a left hand loop over the core. My left hand strand goes over that one under my center strand and through the loop and pull. I'm going to add on a couple more beads. Just um, loosen that up and feed on a couple more beads. Uh, I think I'm going to do maybe an odd number, maybe five. And I'm going to continue in this way. I have decided I'm not going to do the whole length of the bracelet in this knotted style. I am going to tie off. And I'm going to do something a little creative because I want to get some of those six millimeter beads in my design. So it'll just be a second for you. I'm going to finish knotting this length and I'll be back. So I'm going to stop here. I have five beads on and I want to um, stop macrame and for the rest of my bracelet design, I want six strands. So I only would have four here. So I've taken another length of my burgundy Brazilian cord and I'm going to come underneath just the way that I did when I started and make another macrame knot. So I know this seems a little bit strange, but I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna make a right hand loop, rest it on top of my core cords then I'm going to take my add-in cord tail and go over that one and under the core and through the loop if I can get it. I'm ignoring the one that I've been working with. It's there hanging out. I'm just ignoring it. And I'm just going to do one square knot. And this is just simply to add this in. I'm going to do the you know complete square knot. The second part is make a left hand loop, bring that that over that tail under the core and through the loop the same thing that I've been doing throughout the whole project and I'm just going to pull that and now I'm going to disconnect everything from my tying station and I'm going to switch to um, an overhand knot put like a nice chunky overhand knot here gathering all these strands up because as I said, um, I want to incorporate all of the, all of the uh, beads that are in this month's box. I really love those six millimeter beads. So let me set that out of the way. And now I have this, and now I have six cords to work with, but I'm going to gather them all up right here and just do a really chunky overhand knot. Get my knotting tweezer back in here. It's going to hide those square knots. I'm just going to grab, I'm just going to grab right on top of those square knots and just pull all six cords. It's 
so it's fine that it hides them. It's just it really was too secure. My transition, just make sure I'm going to pull the individual cords just to make sure that my knot is secure. I see a little, I see a little bit of a loop right there. Let me find that. There it goes. Okay, so the first little part of my bracelet is done, my closure is on, and now I have six cords to work with. So I'm going to bring my beads back in, and now I am gonna fill these cords individually up with beads. So I'm going to start with, uh, let's see, let me start with my little, uh, let's do the blue, let me start with the blue. And I think what I'm going to do is put, make some little bead patterns. So maybe um, a blue, a spacer, a blue, and then an overhand knot. I want to see my burgundy cord through, you know, as a spacer. My knots are going, I wanna see this cord. Um, I love it as an accent color, so I want that to be a spacer. And let's see, I'm gonna to need to do double knots because the holes on those beads are a little bit large. And, and I also wanna see, I also wanna see the knot. So I'm gonna double those up. So I think my plan is, oh, I love that. So my plan is that this strand is going to be all this pattern to my desired length. I'm gonna do a beige one, a green one, and then I am going to bring in my seed beads that I pulled out and do the other three strands in a seed bead pattern. And so I am just going to work away and I will come back and show you because this is very repetitive. I'm gonna do the same thing just over and over again until I have my desired length, uh, my, bead, my bead, my spacer, a knot, and just fill up all six strands. Okay, I have worked out all six of my patterns here. Um, they're really simple, but they feature the different sizes of beads in the different colors. And I did bring in those Picasso seed beads and um, the green and the beige, and then those other really pretty, like, um, what was this even called? I forget the name already. It's that uh, perma finish matte galvanized. It's called Starlight. And so I just dotted that with my cord and I'm gonna continue knotting to my desired length and then I'm gonna bundle all of these together and do another overhand knot. And what I'm thinking is that my loop to go over my button closure is going to be this little pattern here, but I'll play with that when I get there. And the other thing that um, I have switched to, instead of doing a double knot, let me get a few beads here on here and I'll show you. Instead of doing a double knot, I have found that doing a surgeon's knot, which is essentially a double knot, uh, saved me a little bit of time and I got the chunkier knot, uh, you know, in between the beads that I wanted to see. So I just did, for a surgeon's knot, a loop and then a loop again and then reach inside that double loop and grab my bead and then pull. And so that gave me like a nice thickness and I'm really seeing my burgundy cord. And so I'm gonna continue making this little bundle, this little six strand bundle to my desired length. It'll just be a second for you and I'll be back to show you how we're gonna finish this off. I have been playing with this teardrop bead as my dangle for my bracelet and I really love featuring a dramatic drop or dangle 
on a bracelet. So I went into my stash and I got this really beautiful decorative head pin and that's a great start. But I also recently got this incredible mix of cone shaped bead caps and I have been sitting here playing with this. It is so full of different shapes. Oh, I like that one. Uh, let me show you this. I just got this and I am beyond thrilled with it. It is got all these cool, like this is shaped like a bell with a little filigree edge. This one is more of a traditional cone. This one is kind of flared out like a flower. It kind of looks like a flower if you turn it that way. And there are some really tiny ones in here. I mean, look how little these are. I mean, they're just amazing. So I kind of pulled this from my stash and of all the ones I tried, I was really looking for one that would really fit down snugly on top of this teardrop bead and just become an extension of the bead. And I think that does it. And then maybe um, try just a green seed bead right at the top. I just always like to finish off the metal with something that is that really is pretty so pretty. I am just going to grab my one step looper and get a simple loop in this component slash dangle. Let me exchange my grip here. This decorative head pin is such, I don't know what the base metal is, maybe it's steel, but it is extremely um, tough. It's tough for everything, the one step looper, but it did it. It did a really nice loop for me in there. I probably still tidy that up as I am known to do. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist with my jewelry, but look at that. Let me straighten it. Look at that beautiful little drop. So that's ready when I finish my bracelet. I got a little diverted because <laughs> I have finished all of my uh, six strands. I got them all to the same length and I've separated them into basically um, twos. And I'm do going to do something that, you know, is going to look a little bit strange. Oh, and I just wanted to show you on this one, um, just to show you how I finished my pattern. I could not get a full pattern of three, three, and three. So I just made it go to the length because I feel like when this is all bundled together it won't even be noticeable and so what I have done here is separated these into three sections because they're all knotted right here and I'm going to do kind of a braid where I bring these two to the middle and then bring these two to the middle and bring these two to the middle and so basically this is going to be controlled chaos. It's not going to look like a braid when I bundle them together, but they'll be like pleasantly tangled. And that way, um, by doing this, I'm hoping that I'll be able to kind of get peaks of all of my patterns when I tie the knot. And I'm just going to like bunch that up. And I wanted to finish by pulling this blue strand to the middle and now I'm just going to gather these all up and as I said this is not going to stay like a braid when I get my you know when I get my knot in there but it is kind of like controlled chaos <laughs> is what I think of it as and I just want to make sure that I don't have like a funky piece here um, and with six strands that can happen so I'm just before I tie my knot I'm just going to give every single one of these a pull and just make sure that they're all, I still haven't gotten to that. There's that green one right there that was sticking out a little bit. Okay, and I'm just going to do an overhand knot. This is where a knotting tweezer can really help you when you have so many cords to manage. Although, you know, you can do this without a tool. You can do this with just your fingers, but... Um, I really love the precision of a knotting tweezer. So I just reached inside that knot and gotten a hold of all my all my bundle, all my strands <laughs> that are bundled and pull it down. And before I like really commit to tightening that down, I'm just looking to see, you know, how it looks and I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna commit to that knot 
and with a wax cord you don't really need glue but I tend to add a little drop of beaters glue to my knots so I will do that after I get my get my clasp on but that is just absolutely beautiful and now I only need one of these threads to string my seed beads on so let me kind of have a look at how they landed and I'm going to go for a middle one now my idea was to use this strand right here and repeat that pattern for my loop and I just need to fill this loop with seed beads enough so that it goes over this the I don't want to get this too complicated so I'm just going to wrap this around and what I do when I'm doing this final knotted piece is I just secure my loop and then I keep knotting on top of that until I'm happy with the thickness the look the security and all of that and then at the end when I'm doing a bracelet like this I just have a look at everything and uh, you know I kind of decide with my heart if I'm going to add beads to these extra threads or what I'm going to do with it you know if I'm going to just trim it away uh, on this one I'm thinking I might just trim it away because I love the dr the drama of this of this dangle here but you know I you always have that option so because like they're really pretty um, I've even done it before where I just made this into a tassel just you know trim it and um, but I'll get this part done and then I'll play with that so I just want to make sure that my button goes in my loop fairly easily and it does that is absolutely gorgeous I love it sometimes I just hate to um, trim that away and I think rather I mean there's a lot going on in this bracelet seed beads macrame fluted beads single strand into you know six strands um, I may just create a little fringiness right here with this that might be really pretty but I'm gonna not I'm gonna do another knot as I said I will just go around until I'm happy with the thickness here until I feel like it's secure and it looks good so I'm gonna do a couple more overhand knots that's perfect okay now I'm going to trim this pretty short let's see um, I'm gonna make this a little fringy section so I'm gonna really make this short and before I before I um, trim this last little part I'm gonna put a little dot of beaters glue just a little little tiny bit this is GS hypo cement I'll show you the other one that I sometimes use they're essentially the same thing but I just want to make sure that over time and with pulling this loop over the button for you know the on and off closure I just want to make sure that it doesn't loosen itself free and I'm going to add a little bit to this knot here too this transition knot okay and this glue is a pain it still it keeps oozing out until you get this pin Okay, back in the hole and then you can't see the hole because the glue is everywhere <laughs> this is the other one that I sometimes use the beetle on bead stringing glue I think they're essentially the same thing and I do get questions about glue the thing about like the GS hypo cement and this bead stringing glue is that if you're a bead weaver or you do knots like this this doesn't dry crunchy hard like super glue will uh, it's still a little bit rubbery when it fully dries and you know that's good for a knotted piece that's so fluid so I can put a link for those in the description box below uh, you know for those of you not familiar with the glue situation <laughs> and um, 
So what I'm going to do is go ahead and trim this little piece and I am going to use my knotting tweezer to unravel these fibers here and just make this kind of a little tassel, give it some fringiness. The nice thing too is when you're doing uh, any of this technique is um, you can, once you've put a little bit of glue on your knot, you could play with stringing beads on these little extra cords or doing what I'm doing. And if you don't like it, you can always cut it away and just have a clean knotted bracelet. But you know, it's kind of cute. It's kind of exotic, especially in that color. Okay, this is so gorgeous. How beautiful. I love the way this transitions from macrame into that beaded pattern into six strands. That is so stunning. And the bracelet with the other box from Craftica also, I probably wouldn't wear them together, but I'd be tempted because they are so beautiful and colorful. How lovely is that? I just love it. So let's get to adding my beautiful <laughs> charm. And let's see, I think that I'm going to put it on this end, or do I want to put it here? Decisions, decisions maybe here because then that will not be in the way. So let me just get a jump ring. I'm going to use a jump ring that I have made out of 20 gauge wire. I use my bail making pliers and 20 gauge wire with anti-tarnish coating and I make all different sizes of jump rings. I'm gonna go for like a five or six millimeter here. I never can remember which bale or you know, which mandrel on the on the bale making plier that I used but I just you know look at it and decide and then I have a little a little method that I just think is really nice for attaching charms instead of putting my charm like through the the loop where it's affixed or through an area you know like a loop I will put it around the whole circumference of the piece like that so no matter which way I put my bracelet on and no matter which way it spins this dramatic <laughs> dangle will go around 360 degrees so it's never kinked it's never stuck and it's just, I just love it. So no matter whether I grab my bracelet to put it on this way and loop it through, or whether I go this way, this is, you know, never going to hang badly or, or get stuck in the bracelet because it moves so freely when you attach it around the circumference like that. Oh my goodness, you guys, I just love this bracelet. It is so pretty and so fun. Oh, I might need a little bit more glue there. Um, okay, so I will put some pictures up at the end of the video and um, let me clean up my mat a little bit and also in the description box I will put links to this beautiful Bohem style box and don't forget there are two projects that this box was meant for that you have all the supplies for. Um, I pop up a picture of that for you and um, you can do that but you know the box is yours. So if you wanna just relax and do what's already been thought out for you, you totally can. But if you wanna do your own thing, which is what I usually end up doing, the beads are yours. If it inspires another design in you, then that's really great too. So that is the beauty of these boxes. At least all of your beads are curated. And as I said, two full projects are in this box. So I have all of this left and I'm thinking that a link bracelet with these beautiful butterflies and some of these beads in the middle would be really pretty like a thinner bracelet so i thank you so much for watching don't forget to check the description box for the link to the bohem style box and the craftica company and if you haven't subscribed to my channel it's a lovely way to support my work and it doesn't cost you anything or obligate you to anything and if you tap the bell notification then when i come back with other videos, you will not miss the notification. Thanks a lot for watching everybody. I hope you're all safe and well and having fun on your beading mats. Ciao creative friends.